right, here we go. Dalton Highway, gateway to the Arctic. So we got everything all laid out for me to do my flat lay photo. You know, from above, you shoot a photo down of everything you got. But of course we got so excited about packing that I forgot to get the photo, but I'll do what we've got so far or what we've got left. Step one of any road trip that we plan or outing is what do we do with the animals? You guys know Libby usually gets to come with us. She's riding shotgun right now. This is Callie, you guys haven't seen her yet. And we are on our way to the doggy daycare. You can see the cat carrier back there. Um, Kiki is in there and we're heading to our favorite spot. <laughs> Can't tell you where. You wanna see Rory? Oh yeah, look at that smile. It's like deja vu of last year. Got our packs, snacks, and you can see how clean everything is. Won't be that way for long. Ships and is transported um, across the ocean. 
but Pump Station 5 is kind of cool. We just read in the mile post that it's not actually a pump station, but it's more like a slowdown station. Right now we're south of the Brooks Range and the um, pipeline for the most part is gravity fed. So right now it has come down through Adigan Pass, which is the highest point of elevation on the Dalton Highway. And so Pump Station 5 slows down the flow of the oil before it continues on its way south. Coldfoot, Alaska, where there is cell phone service and gas and a little restaurant, um, general store thing. Here you go. So they've got helicopters and bush planes that take off from here. They call it Coldfoot Camp, where people live and work. Not much, uh, just a couple diesel pumps and then one for unleaded. And you go in there and pay. Paying inside only, no pay at the pump. And pretty pricey too. $119, take a guess. <laughs> We just picked our, our campsite. We're at, I think it's called Marion Creek Campground. It's a BLM managed campground just north of Coldfoot, like a few miles north of Coldfoot. It's almost seven and we actually have cell phone service at the campground too. Um, so we're gonna hang out here for the night and then head the rest of the way north to our caribou hunting grounds first thing in the morning. Super low-lying brush and everything. See, we're gonna pass 
some more of the pipeline. The pipeline's been weaving back and forth here. Kind of cool too, we were reading in the milepost. So on these stretches, the pipeline, like the pipe itself sits on these sliding feet so that it can flex as the temperature fluctuates. You know, the pipe expands and contracts and those sliding feet allow it to shift with those fluctuations. And I was also reading about it that in all, it takes about one week for the oil to go from Prudhoe Bay to Valdez. So pretty cool. Luckily, it doesn't take us that long in a car. parked at this pull out here and it looks like some other people were here before us and had some luck because they left some feet behind only three there's a fourth foot missing unless it was a three-legged caribou i'm gonna gear up and do a day hike go scouting <laughs> so now we're back at the truck and dry our boots because both of our boots we found out are not waterproof. He's got Keens, I've got Under Armour, and both of us are already soaked. Soaked soles, soaked socks. So that's not good. That's not how you want to start out your trip, but we're gonna talk about it tonight. All right, it is Monday morning. We went on our scouting trip yesterday. Bottom line is, I am not gonna do the hunt. <laughs> it's gonna be in the 30s every day. And I, maybe I'm a baby, but I can't do five days in 32 degree weather with soaking wet shoes, socks and shoes every day. There's nothing that you can gather to like make a fire. So you don't have any chance of drying them out overnight. 
or doing anything to warm yourself if you have hypothermia or something like that. So we are turning around and going back home and going to come up with a new plan. I feel the worst because of for Brandon, you know, not getting to do this. This was going to be my hunt anyway. This is my caribou. He told me it's totally up to me. But it still doesn't get rid of the disappointment, you know, for both of us. Something that you planned so hard for. You've been packing, making list after list. And it literally takes weeks to prepare for this. And then you get up here and you're all the way out there. And then to decide that you just can't do it. <laughs> it's pretty much like the worst feeling you can have. Um, I told Brandon, it's like when you watch Alone. And you see those people and it's like day one. And they tap out because they lost their their feral rod or something like that. I guess I just have like the tiniest taste right now of how truly terrible they must feel doing doing that um, right at the start of their alone journey. So I don't know why I keep thinking of that. Maybe the fact that I'm recording myself makes me think of alone more often too. But anyway, we're turning around and going home. <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying, but it's that disappointing, you know.